Hello everyone, I'm Usman Anwar, and I'm a program manager on the Azure Data Science Tools team. In this session, we would learn how to do data science and web development with Python in Visual Studio. We will go over a bunch of new features and run through some demos. Our first demo will be about getting Python support for Visual Studio using the data science and or the Python web development workloads. We will then run through a quick data science example in which we will use open data to predict future stock prices and evaluate different regression models. We will then see how you can develop apps faster using templates with our new Cookie Cutter Explorer feature. So let's get into the first demo. In this, we will see how we can install Python support for Visual Studio. Visual Studio 2017 allows developers to install tools by workloads. This way they can control the size of the total installation and it also customizes the Visual Studio user experience to those particular set of tools. We're going to look into the Python development workloads and the data science workloads. In the Python development workload, you have a couple of items checked by default. You get the Python language support, and then there are some optional items such as cookie cutter, template support, Python web support, and Python 3 support. If you don't wish to download and install these, you can go ahead and uncheck them to reduce your install size. Let's take a look at the data science workload. This workload includes language support for f -sharp, Python, and R. For our purpose, we only need Python, so we can go ahead and uncheck the f -sharp and R workloads. We'll keep the cookie cutter template support for later, but we can, and we can also keep the Python web support so we don't have to go and uh, install an additional workload. The total install size, as you can see, is 1.9 gigabytes, which is a lot less if we were to install all of these tools. We can always come back and modify our installation to add more tools from this workload. Now that we've learned how to install the tools, let's do a quick data science example. We will be doing some regression analysis to predict stock prices using the tools, environments, and samples that we got as part of the data science workload. Here I have a machine learning sample I got as part of the data science workload. This sample uses an open data set of stock prices to predict future pr stock prices. It processes the data and trains three regression learners and then plots the results so we can compare which one of those models predicted the future stock price most accurately. In this, I will be using four popular Python packages, Pandas, NumPy, Scikit-learn, and Matplotlib. I'll be using the Anaconda Python environment that got installed as part of the workload as well. The Anaconda environment comes pre-fitted with over 100 Python packages for scientific computing and data science. Let's walk through the code real quick and run this application. The first step is to download the data and read it in a pandas data frame. The second is to read it into a NumPy array, normalize it, and then split it into a training set and a test set. We will use the training set to train our models and the test set to compare the predicted values against. I then use scikit-learn to train three models. I train one using the radial basis function, one using the line a linear kernel, and one using a polynomial kernel. I then go ahead and plot them with matplotlib. Let's get started. Here I have a plot of predicted values in red against the actual values in the data set. One half of this data, the one to the left, was used to train the models, the one to the right represents the test set, just so we can compare the predicted values against the actual values. The R square value, or the coefficient of determination, indicates how accurate a model was at predicting the values. The closer this value is to one, the better the model. Of the three, we can see that the RBF model has the highest R square value, so we know that this is a better model for this particular data set for this type of prediction. So in this demo, we saw how we got from a sample to insight and a, and, and a bunch of trained machine learning models using just the tools and environments we got from the data science workload.
Now let's take a look on how you can develop apps faster using the Cookie Cutter Explorer. Cookie Cutter is an open source command line utility, which allows developers to create projects from templates provided by experts. In this edition of Visual Studios, we have built an Explorer experience around Cookie Cutter so it's easier for developers to search for templates, install them, and then use them to generate different projects. Let's take a look. I can use the Cookie Cutter Explorer to search for templates on GitHub and also generate projects from any of the templates I installed previously. To find the tool, go to Tools, Python Tools, and Cookie Cutter Explorer. You can also open it from the View tab, and you can also create a project directly from Cookie Cutter from File, New, Project from Cookie Cutter. In this demo, we are going to create an Azure web app project using a cookie cutter template. So let's go ahead and search for one. I'm going to type in Azure and search. I get three results. I think I like Brett's cookie cutter here. I'm going to select it and hit next. The tool is going to clone this template so I can use it later on. And then it gives me an option to choose the location of my project folder. It also gives me an option to inject custom context into the project files that will be generated from the template. This context could be environment variables, connection strings, and other configuration data. I will give a site name. Let's call it my Azure Python web app. I'm going to select a Python version for this app. So let's pick 3.5.2. And then I'm going to select the CPU architecture for this version. There's a whole bunch of other custom context, context that I can inject that we can skip for now. I hit Create. Cookie Cutter successfully created these files using the template on GitHub that it had cloned over to my machine. After files have been successfully created, I get an option to open the project in the Solution Explorer. Here we have the project files open in the Solution Explorer. Let's take a look at the Azure deploy.json file, which specifies a few deployment settings that will be used by Azure when we publish this to the cloud. As you can see, the site name here has been changed to my Azure Python web app, as we specified earlier. The Python package is a Python 3.5.2 package for x64. We could inject a bunch of other contexts that we skipped that would have customized this template even further. This shows how developers can get from a template to a project they can simply start coding in, writing business logic in, with just a bunch of clicks and some customizations. We hope that this tool will help developers get started with different Python apps faster especially apps that involve integrating with different cloud services and talking to different databases. We hope you will use this tool well. Hope you enjoyed the demos. If you're interested more about Python tools and Python engineering effort at Microsoft, you can check out our Python blog. If you're interested in machine learning and data science, you're welcome to check out the machine learning blog and our talks on our tools for Visual Studio and Azure Notebooks. If you've got feedback, suggestions, I highly encourage you to check out our GitHub and file issues there. Hope you enjoyed the session. Happy coding.